In the previous videos, we solved most of our combinatorial problems with multiplication, such as finding the number of permutations of the letters in a word, or applying the fundamental counting principle. And with multiplication, oh, you can put on your abstract thinking goggles, we essentially found a set with one go. So all we had to do was multiply, and we had a set. However, there are times when we cannot just multiply and find everything. We had to split this set up into a bunch of small sets, into a bunch of subsets and cases. So in order to find the sum, in order to find the, the entire set, we have to split it up and count each of its subsets uh, individually and then add the subsets to get the overall set. So sometimes multiplication by itself is not sufficient. We also have to use addition, where to count the whole, which would be very difficult by multiplication alone, we need to add the sum of its parts. Only in combinatorics where Aristotle would be wrong, the whole should be equal to the sum of its parts. Let's start with this example. How many ways are there from the starting position to go to the end position? So for example, um, we see that from here to here, there are three ways. From this red dot to this red dot, there are also three ways. And from this red dot to red dot, there are three ways. And we see, oh, there are two paths. So does that mean we should multiply all this by two? Of course not, because we see that these two paths are different. So this is an example where only using multiplication, we cannot arrive at our final results because we have two different cases. We must add up both cases to find the total number of ways to go from the start to end. So that's why we have to add the number of um, I guess individual ways to go from the second uh, this path from the start to end. So we have 4 times 3. So here by adding up our different cases aka adding up our subsets we could say we have a total of 3 times 3, 9, 27 plus 12. We would have 39 ways to go from the starting point to the ending point. It's important to recognize when we should add our cases and when we should multiply. Usually we add whenever there are very different cases. And we multiply if everything falls within one case. If you're ever not sure, go with the addition because multiplication is basically addition. Let's try another example. So recently you bought a new laptop and minutes after you bought it, your sister discovered your computer password, your laptop password. So you decide to reset it. The computer only accepts passwords consisting of case sensitive letters and numbers. And um, you must input a minimum of three characters for the password and a maximum of 10 characters. How many different computer passwords are you allowed to input or allowed to reset? The first step uh, to solving this question is to know if we can use multiplication straight away to solve it or do we have to split it into cases. So let's examine if we were to split it into cases, what cases would we have? Well, we would have to find the number of passwords that only have three characters, the number that only have four characters, the number of passwords that have five characters, all the way to the number of passwords that have 10 characters. So seeing this, we recognize that this problem, um, I think, can only be solved by splitting up into cases. Because the number of passwords that have 5 characters is definitely different from the number of passwords that can be made from 10 characters. Let's try to find each case. How many ways can we have passwords that only have 3 characters? We have 26 letters in total, case sensitive, so 26 times 2, 52 letters because uh, majuscule and minuscule are different, sorry, capital and lowercase are different, and numbers, uh, there are um, 10 numbers, 10 digits, that's what I mean by numbers. So 62 ways we can have the first character, then there are 62 characters in the second place, and 62 characters in the third place, which is a total of 62 to the power of 3 passwords that can be made from 3 characters. How many passwords can be made from four characters? Well, we have the same thing, 62 times 62, 62 and 62 characters in the third place, and 62 characters that can be in the fourth place for a total of 62 to power of four. What well, about five characters? Uh, well, if a password has five characters, there are a total of 62 to power five. 
number of ways of making this password. And so we, we do all this all the way to 62 to the power of 10. So the total number of way of setting up your computer password is equal to the sum of the number of ways of setting up the password for each individual number of characters, which would be 62 to the power 3 plus 62 to the power 4 plus 62 to the power 5 all the way to 62 to the power 9 plus 62 to the power of 10. So we could take out our calculator and try solving it, but let's say um, we don't have a calculator. How could we simplify this expression? So let x equals this. I believe there is a formula for um, geometric series, but let's you know use common sense. So 62x would be 62 to the power 4 plus 62 to the power 5 plus 62 to the power 9 plus 62 to the power 10 plus 62 to the power of 11 because we multiply both sides by 62. So that means if we subtract 62x with x, we will be left with 61x. So if we subtract these two equations, in which case 61x is equal to 62 to the power 11 minus 62 to the power of 3. That means x is equal to 62 to the power 11 minus 62 to the power 3 divide by 60 yes yeah, 61 and let's use our calculator this should be um, a pretty large number okay 8.53 dot 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 times 10 to the power 17 so there are a total of well over a trillion ways to set your password. The take home point from this video is that sometimes we should add with combinatorics problem, we should split a question into its parts because it will be easier to find the sum of its parts than it is to find the whole in one shot. And then the sum of its parts will tell us the whole. Thank you for watching.